Hi, I'm Val Hart in San Antonio, Texas, founder of Val Hart and Friends at ValHart.com. Welcome to the Real Dr. Doolittle Show, the show for animals and the people who love them. I've been called a real-life Dr. Doolittle many times in my career as an expert animal communicator, behaviorist, pet psychic, and master healer. My mission and passion is to improve the lives of animals the world over by helping humans learn how to speak their language, how to understand their viewpoints, and heal. After all, our love of animals helps us be better humans, and the more balanced and healthy we are, the more balanced and healthy they can be, too. Be sure and look for my CDs on iTunes, and to find out more about my work and to receive your free Quick Start Animal Talk course, just go to my website at valheart.com. While you're there for a limited time, you can also apply for a complimentary Happy Animal Assessment Session. And if you want to learn how to be your own Dr. Doolittle, check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system available now on my website at valheart.com. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Val Hart, the real Dr. Doolittle, and today I'm talking with Joey Kamen. Joey is a veteran stand-up comedian, a voice talent, a very incredible voice talent, an actor, award-winning short filmmaker. He's performed professionally since the age of 17 in everything from movies to sitcoms to Las Vegas showrooms. He was a protege of the legendary voice actor Dawes Butler, who was better known as the voices of Yogi Bear and Huckleberry Hound, some of my favorite cartoons. Um, Joey's provided voices for lots of cartoon shows, commercials, vo- vo- movies, video games, uh, TV, radio commercials. Oh, my God, you have such an incredible um, resume, Joey. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for taking some time uh, to talk with us today because what I want to know about is your debut book, My Life with Snoopy, which is a wonderful book. Thank you so much. Um, so let me just tell people a little bit about the book uh, so they know what we're here to talk about. Okay. So My Life with Snoopy, and by the way, you do have a website on this, mylifewithsnoopy.com. My Life with Snoopy is an exciting tail-wagging story about the relationship between a man and his dog, Snoopy the shelter dog, and his human friend, Joey Kamen. Comedy and calamity ensue with various dogs and cats and other colorful colorful characters that we're going to meet when we talk here with Joey and when you read the book. Um, and y'all had a 13-year friendship. I think that's fabulous. Um, yeah. So I want to hear a lot more about that, and I especially want to hear about your distrust of dogs because it really surprised me. I thought it was really amazing. Um, and how you came from not liking dogs to having an amazing guy like Snoopy bring such a lot of joy to your life, and, and what happened? How did that happen? Well, um, I, I don't want to ruin it for the reader, but when I was a, when I was a, when I was a kid, when I was I grew up in the pretty rough streets of Detroit, and um, I, uh, I had a traumatic thing happen to me when I was ten years old with a puppy. And I don't want to give away what happens because uh, in, in the story, but I had a traumatic thing happen to which shouldn't happen to any kid, you know, mm-hmm. involving family, parents, and a pet. So I, I didn't like animals after that. It was just like sort of like a post-traumatic stress syndrome, and it mm-hmm. took me 30 years, believe it or not. I didn't get Snoopy till I was 40 years old, and I, I adopted wow. him from the Burbank Animal Shelter in in Southern California, in the, mm-hmm. so, which is the Los Angeles area. Wonderful, wonderful shelter. And mm-hmm. Snoopy just changed my life, and, and, and I can't really put it into words. Uh, wow. And he, he was a beautiful dog. I mean, if you, you go to the website, you'll see his picture, and it's all over social media and that sort of thing. Uh, he was a shelty mix. He looked like a little fox. I mean, people wanted to just hug him when they saw him. He was, he was very good looking. I mean, mm-hmm. he's the Brad Pitt, the Johnny Depp of dogs. I mean, he was a, <laughs> for, for, for 13 and a half years, I, I, you know, even when he was you know, on his last leg dying, even the vet who euthanized him mentioned, my God, he's so pretty. So he was wowing people with his looks his whole life. Not not that he knew that he was good looking, but he, he was a good looking dog, you know, and yeah. just like a good looking person, people give them the benefit of the doubt and like, you know, right. clamor towards them, you know, and it was the same thing with my dog. So it was, it, that was a kind of interesting experience. But his unconditional love is what uh, helped change my life and uh, change both our lives. We We, we, we discovered each other. At, at the animal shelter, and, and it was a, a great experience, and I put it into a book because 
uh, it was therapeutic for me. I mean, uh, maybe many of your listeners have uh, have lost their their best friends, which I did, and uh, I, I dedicated the book to uh, all pet owners who have loved and lost their best friend. And my stories can give you a good laugh and a, and a good cry because it's some of it's very very funny and some of it's very very sad because we we want our dogs to outlive us. We want our, we love them so much we don't want them to go, and, and that's not the case, you know. And uh, I don't want to get too serious, but um, that that that's the, the just of, of 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 the book, and it's mm-hmm. fun and uh, a good time and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. <laughs> I love it. I, you know, I you wrote something here. I think that really touched me because I know. Well, it, it, what you wrote is that his passing left a hole in your heart. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think you know all of us who love animals and have had them near and dear to us. You know, animals get really close to us. They get, like, under our defenses that we typically have with people, you know, and they touch us at really deep levels, and they touch our hearts. And when they do go, it does leave a hole in our heart. So I'm I'm really glad that you brought that out. Yeah, get it. Yeah, and, um, you know, dogs are just great. And uh, the book was, it wasn't a book at first. It was just me just writing about just, therapeutically writing and mm-hmm. journaling and that sort of stuff. And then right. all these stories came into my head, and I said, I might as well put them down on paper, and then it just turned into a book. I love it. I love it. So what was the best part about adopting a shelter dog? Oh, uh, just uh, joy, <laughs> fun. <laughs> uh, it, it, it was taking responsibility for a creature that, uh, that mm. loves you more than you can love yourself. Uh, and it, and I, I learned unconditional love for the first time. Uh, which I didn't have in my life. And wow. my message about my book is, to everybody listening and in general is that get a shelter dog. Um, don't go to a puppy mill. I mean, I, I don't find them. There's so many millions of dogs out there that, that can use a, a person's love. And let that unconditional love um, put that love in you, and you can carry that love into relationships on two feet. Mm. Uh, is pretty much my message. <laughs> I, I, it's a great message. I love that message. Yeah, I, you said, no matter how hurt or wounded one is in life, the love of a shelter dog can help you take that unconditional love and carry it into relationships on two feet. Yes. Yes. So, so how did your love for and 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 being loved by Snoopy affect your relationships with the two feeted peoples? Oh. M- the relationship more with my with my wife, uh, I think, was was better. Or I, I wasn't married when I first got Snoopy, oh. but it um, when I started dating again and everything, I thought I became more of an open person, more of a loving person, because oh. he brought that into me. I was more, I had more of an edge to myself before I got before I got my dog, you know. Um, oh. And I started the way I got him was I was hanging around. I, people, artist types with dogs and that sort of thing, and I, mm-hmm. I slowly but surely got to like them a little bit more. And then when I found him, that was it. I was done. I was like, you know, um, this was love at first sight. I, and I don't believe in, in love at first sight with humans. I mean, it's not the same thing. It can be lust at first sight, but with a, <laughs> with a dog, it, it's different. I mean, I mean, how many people have been on dates or something where they're like, oh, we've been engaged for five years. Do you love? Him? Well, I'm not really sure yet. I mean, but you can see a puppy in five seconds. I love him. I love him. You know, it's like so it's, it's um, you know, you love that dog. You, you see your dog. You see, your, oh, 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 I love this puppy. Well, what about me? What about me? Well, hey, man, I'm not sure yet about my feelings for you, but this dog, I just met him. I love, love you know. So they ha- because they have no agenda. They have no. They're just pure love, and, and they're wonderful. And um, <laughs> I just love them. <laughs> Uh, I'm getting that idea. You're starting yeah. to convince me. I, yeah. I, uh, yeah, yeah, you're winning me over. Hmm. So uh, tell us a little bit about Dogs in Hollywood. I, I found that to be a really interesting chapter. Um, you know, you're talking about, and it was, and this was your period, too, where you were just starting to kind of begin to even open to the possibility that dogs could be cool. Well, the- that's when I was hanging around the, the the people that had dogs, and they're right. they're, 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 they're you know, they all had different personalities. And at first, I didn't like them. I'm like, you know, guy I know how to pug. I'm like, get it away, get it away. <laughs> and um, you know, it's breathing near me. I don't want this. And um, so 
So uh, uh, it's begging for food. Get it away. I don't like its breath on me. Um, please. Uh-huh. Uh, so that, that sort of thing. And then as I just hung out more with people like that, and then uh, there was an incident where a friend had me sit for his dogs. And that just oh. j- changed. And I did for a couple of days. And I just felt the warmth and love. And that's like I, w- I turned into a 10-year-old kid again. And I went out uh-huh. and got Snoopy. <laughs> and, uh, wow. So, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's just it's just been a really good journey, and I put all that in the book, and um, that's that's that that's my story with the Hollywood dogs. And I love it. I love it. So so you yeah you got up close and personal, and they finally kind of weaselled their way in until you could actually see them and and get them beyond their breasts and beyond their appearance, and you just got them as people, kind of like people disguised in little fursuits. Yeah, that's that's a yeah. good analogy. Um, okay. And each one had their own different personality, and uh, yeah, my boy just was uh, so special to me, and yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I write about it in the book, and yeah. it was fantastic. Arnold's here talking to uh, Dr. Val. Please look. Uh, I want you to help me with my Austrian pincher. He's peeing everywhere in the house. I need my Austrian pincher. a fantastic dog. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you must go to www.mylifewithsnoopy.com. <laughs> Joey's book is fantastic. There's action adventure in the book. I love it. It's fantastic. There's no Guatemalan in there. I love it. It's a fantastic book. My Life with Snoopy. He's a beautiful dog. Buy the book. Fantastic. Talk to Val. She will help you. I love it. Arnold, please. No, no, Joey, let me help you. No, uh, Arnold, please. No, oh, no, the book is fantastic. I can't stop saying fantastic. It's lovely. It makes you laugh, makes you cry. It's everything you ever wanted in a book. Okay, there's a voice for you. That's a great voice. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. So, um, so do you find humor in everything? Oh no, no, I don't. Oh. Well, I, I try to, but uh, well, well, it, well, the book is very humorous, uh, yeah. and I tr- I try to give everybody a, a sense of fun. It, it, in a way, it's a different type. There's a lot of books written about dogs and people's relations with the dog, but the difference of my book is that it, it's fun. It's funny, mm-hmm. and uh, there's tragedy in the last several chapters because it's the end of this life. But people that have mm-hmm. told me and people that have reviewed the book uh, said that it's different in the sense that. I say the real feelings that most people don't want to put out there, what they're yeah. what they're talking about. Most people yeah. don't go into depth and say how they truly, truly feel. It's just pain, and I put it into words. And it was very difficult to write a lot of the book. I, I ended up writing it sitting in the back of my car on a yellow pad while I was oh, crying. Wow. So oh, it just wow. poured out of me on the pen. Right. It wasn't like I sat in front of the typewriter. Uh, and then I put it into the computer and then it was edited and that sort of thing you know in the process of putting a book together so um so it's it, it's very humorous and uh it's also very tragic so i have the yin and the yang there for for people and uh it's heartfelt and heartwarming and, and fun well and i think it's also about healing yes yeah that, that's a, a very it, it is about healing i, I I'm, I'm still healing Yes. Uh, it's like uh, people ask me, am I going to get another dog? And uh, maybe, you know, I, I'm still hurting, uh, mm-hmm. but as less, I mean, there's a beautiful picture on the back of the book uh, of our uh, family. I couldn't look at that picture for two years after he died. It, it, see, I have no kids, so it was, mm-hmm. to me, it yeah. would, this is my version of uh, uh, losing a child. And I uh, believe a lot of people can relate to that when they lose their their their, their best friend. Yeah. And it just hurts, you know. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it does. So uh, it hurts beyond words. And, and I try to put it into words best I can. And, yeah. and it seems that people can are, are relating to it. Yes. Well, you know, because you wrote it from your heart and you 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 let that rawness, you know, yet that vulnerability, you really expose your underbelly, you know, sort of. Um, I think it, it has that much more impact. And so as healing as it was for you to write, I think it's also incredibly healing for people to read. Um, you know, so I know all of us who have animals in our life, at some point we lose them, you know. It's it's part of the joy and the gift of having them, um, that, you know, the gift that they, they were given to us. Um, we are their steward, perhaps a caretaker, and then they're that also for us. And and then at some point we have to experience, you know, letting them go. And um, so I think there's a lot of healing here. And, and I'm so glad that you chose this venue to help yourself heal. 
<clears throat> and I have Thank another you. question. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So you're a comedian. You're a, 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 such a talented voice actor. Did you really do different voices for your dog? Yeah. Well, I would do voices for my dog, but he wouldn't respond. It was like, you know, <laughs> well, I'm going to do a couple right for you right now. But I'm going to go, okay. well, come, this is the I, I do the, well, if anybody listening uh, has young children, ages from like six to even teenagers, there's a video series that I've been doing uh, lately, a video game series called Skylanders. It's very popular, Skylanders Giants. A new one's okay. coming out this month called uh, Skylanders Swap Force. And cool. I do the voice of Terrafin. Uh, okay. He's a shark and uh Mm. Kids will know what it is. It's very, uh-huh. very popular. And Terrafin talks like this. It's feeding time, y'all. It's feeding time. <laughs> so I would like I, w- I would do that voice for like Snoopy. Go, come here, Snoopy. Come here, boy. Here, boy. Here, boy. And he would look at me like he would look like let me like. Where'd my master go? Who are you? And, and he would listen to me. Or I go, hey, Snoopy, Snoopy, come here, please. Snoopy, Snoopy, Snoopy. Hey, come here, come here, come here. Or, or any voice I would do. Here, Snoopy. Here, Snoopy. And he would like he would like, huh? Huh? He just, he, he just, his, his head was turned, his ears would perk up, and he'd go, uh, where's my master? And I would have to talk to him. Talk to, I'd go, come on, Snoopy, get, let's go, let's go. And he'd, go, and he'd come. But otherwise, he'd look at me like I was crazy, which I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he knows your truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, that was always funny to watch his reaction. I wouldn't do it to him a lot because he, I didn't want to confuse him. <laughs> you know, but, but the, the, the times I would do it, because I guess they're used to hearing your your voice. I mean, you would know yeah. this better than me. They're used to hearing the tonality of your voice, and if you change it, right. uh, it, it would uh, kind of like freak them out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think for you, too, it's, for you, it's not just taking on a voice. You're not just doing a voice. You're actually kind of channeling a persona, right? Yeah. So you're shifting your energy. You're shifting, right. you know, the body language, different things, Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, because when I do a character, yeah. I mean, it started as a stand-up comedian, so when I perform, yeah. I start with the voice as an actor, and when I do the voice, my whole body language changes, my face changes, my nostrils change to yeah. so the character that I'm doing, so when I would play around with him like that, it's like, oh, who's this other person in front of me? Not, not yeah, sort of that thing, you know, yeah. it's like, it's, you're acting, you know, I mean, if you yeah. put on a different costume or something, or you're right. a performer, you know, yeah. uh, you're, you're, you're looking into that, and the, the dog's reaction was always funny, if I would put on a different outfit or something, or he didn't like right. seeing big bags or something. If I had a big satchel on me and coming near him, mm-hmm. the big objects would freak him out. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, so right. I, I think that happens with a lot of dogs where they don't like to see some kind of weird thing hanging off you or something. You know, well, it, it cha- yeah. Uh, what I teach my students and you know, my clients, animals see what's in our mind's eye. So whatever we're imaging or visualizing in our mental monitor, they pick that up really quick. They also check our energy, you know, so our feelings, our emotions, what, you know, what energy are we carrying in our body, and then they listen to our voice, um, and of course, scent, you know, is also in there as well, <laughs> but then they uh, watch our, our, um, our, and our body language is, is in there too, but primarily to understand us, they're watching what's in our head, what we're imaging, what we're focusing on. They're checking our feelings, whatever energy we're resonating with, and then they check our voice, and they put those three together to get a composite sort of understanding um, of what we're trying to communicate, what our intentions are, you know, Mm. that sort of thing. So I'm thinking that for you, uh, when you change all those dynamics, your energy changes very dramatically sometimes in a lot in many ways and and not just it's not just the voice um so it would make total sense to me that snoopy would have looked at you and said okay i'm not sure who you are right now (laughs) you still smell like my dad um but you're not sound you're not sounding or feeling like my dad right now right so that's what i would say about that Okay. Does that make sense? It, it, it makes total sense. I just never had put in that uh, uh, perspective. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, one of the things I teach, um, and it's on my site, uh, it's the, the Quick Start to Animal Talk course, um, is how to actually use that information to give a deliberate communication to an animal so that they can better understand you, you can, you know, be clear. Um, but for you, I just think it's hysterical that you would do these voices and, and shift your, your persona so much that... Snoopy's looking at you like, mm, okay, where's my dad? Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> Where did my dad go? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't do that quite often because I just didn't. I, he was just yeah. Well, sweet, you got sweet. it. It was he confusing. Was 
just he was too sweet. <laughs> I, I just didn't want to mess him up. You know, I mean. I know. <laughs> we, we we humans love to be messed with, but uh, I think our animals, uh, not maybe not so much. Um, yeah, I, I would stop right away. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, after a couple of minutes, because he was just like. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any other voices you want to do for us that our listeners may have heard? Yeah, well, uh, for a while I did McGruff the Crime Dog. I didn't do it for the public oh. serve announcements. I did it for um, video game, and I, I'm sorry, uh, uh, DVDs that kids would see in the schools and stuff like that. And cool. it, uh, uh, McGruff basically sounded like, boys and girls, it says McGruff the Crime Dog. You're listening to Val Hart and Friends on her talk animal radio show. And remember, <laughs> we can all take a bite out of crime. <laughs> that, that was something that people might know. Yeah. I love that. That's you know, awesome. Yeah. You know, cool. I, I hope it's okay for me to do that. <laughs> I love. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, it is. Do some yeah. more. I love. Oh, do, I love do it. Do some I more. It. I don't. I don't know what voices to do. I mean, uh, 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 they can go to imdb. dot com and uh, check out my resume online. There. I cool. Mean, uh, you know, I've been just. I do video games, and mm-hmm. you know, okay. most most adults wouldn't really know what the video games are unless right. they're very young and gamers. It's most of their kids. Or right. um, I did Transformers: Dark of the Moon, which was a, mm. a big movie. I did uh, the video game for that, doing yeah. voices or Mafia Two. I must have done about thirty, forty voices on that. Uh, Brutal Legend, um, wow. uh, the Sam and Max series, which was on uh, an online game. I did a couple of years mm. on that. Mm. Uh, the series, so I mean, just mm. different stuff, you know. Wow. Uh, and it, it's it, most people, as I said, most most uh, older people wouldn't know what that what that is. And, yeah. You know, yeah. We're well, doing a lot of kids, uh, you know, kid stuff and helping our new generations grow up. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, inspiring them, I hope. Uh, you've got such a great resume. I would love to talk to you for about a, at least another day about all the people you've worked with. I mean the. the uh, Richard Pryor, Robin Williams, Jim Carrey, David Letterman, Jay Leno, Roseanne Barr, and many, many amazing people. Um, it was just, but I won't, won't bore you with those questions today. No, that was to, my stand-up oh, days, yeah. Your stand-up days, yeah. So um, speaking of your career, do you have any advice for aspiring writers or authors? Oh, boy. Um No. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, thanks for asking. And no, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I, this is my my debut book, and I'm very yeah. proud of it. And it, it's my first time putting something like this out there. I mean, I've written screenplays before and that sort of thing, and mm-hmm. stories, and I've written stand-up comedy for many, many years, and jokes and that sort of thing. And if someone wants to write a book, you really just have to. First of all, uh, have a good premise. I mean, I really can't give too much advice because I'm, I'm new to it. But all I can just say, if you're very passionate about it, like I was passionate about this book, right? Study, learn, write. Just write. Right. Just write. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Just just write. I mean, you're not going to learn. I mean, even Stephen King says, the read and write. The more you read, the more you write, the more the better you get. So mm-hmm. I mean, there's really not much more to say to that and then learn about structure and whether you're writing a novel or a memoir mine's a a memoir a a combination memoir personal and pet memoir so i mean it's different than writing a novel so i mean you really have to study about what uh, genre you're writing and Mm -hmm. go for it i mean there's not much else you can say you know it's all a learning process i mean in, in, in any field just like what you do i mean you had to learn about animals and put it in a way that people can get and help them, you know, and, and right. get it in, in speaking in layman's terms. Right. So, uh, right. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, it does. You know, I'm going back also to what you said earlier, which is you actually started this as therapeutic writing for yourself. Yes. And I think that's a really important point because when, it, it, for instance, what if you had started writing this knowing or thinking that the whole intention and purpose of it was to write a book. You're going to write a book, and you're going to put that book, you know, publish it and put it before millions and come talk about it on, you know, TV and radio and whatnot. Um, wouldn't, would that have changed how you approach this? Uh, probably, but I didn't, I didn't yeah. go into it with that. With that, yeah, of course, I didn't go in with yeah. that attitude. I, I went in right. with like, this is helping me, and it, and, and it will help others. Exactly, uh, and that's know. yeah. That was the, the point I, I wanted. I was trying to bring out for you too. You brought the, it out to help yourself, and in doing so, because it was such a help, 
you you found the encouragement and the inspiration to share it with others. And people, there's a website, I don't know if your listeners are familiar with Goodreads. Goodreads, there's like 20 million people on there. There's a lot of reviews in my book on there, and you can cool. uh, see on there. It, and it's a lot of people that read the book are dog lovers, and um, they, it resonates with them. So I'm very happy about that. <laughs> yes, as you should be. You've done a brilliant job, Joey. This is awesome. Cool. Well, thank you. Yeah. So what message do you want to share with our listeners about your book to leave them with today? Well, uh, um, basically, I I would say um, shelter dogs um, are a great thing to have in someone's life introduced to a child's life. Mm -hmm. They live with uncertainty and anxiety until you give them a new home and a new lease on life. So what you can do is enrich your life enrich your family's life, and most most importantly, enrich the dog's life. Adopt a shelter dog. Stay away from puppy mills. And I don't mean that in a, in a mean way. It's just that um, if you want a purebred dog, go to a, a reputable person that you can get a purebred dog. That's not my thing. It's a lot of other people's things, and there's nothing wrong with it. If I, Hey, if I wanted a purebred German Shepherd, I, I would go to a place that's reputable and not something that, you know, that's gonna, dog's going to have some kind of problems. It, right. You have to do your research. But for me, it's a shelter dog. That's why my book is called My Life with Snoopy, How One Shelter Dog's Love Changed a Man's Life and Other Tales of Adventure. So I'm a shelter dog post person, your local shelter, animal shelter can really uh, change your life. Change the dog's life, help your children, um, introduce them to responsibility of taking care of a dog, uh, allowing the love into the kid's life. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yes. And your book's a beautiful book, and what I'd love to finish up with today, you wrote a poem for Snoopy. Mm -hmm. Would you be so kind as to read that for us? Okay. It's a... um, a, Okay, I I can read that. It's a little emotional, but... um, at the back of the book, I have a poem, and I, I believe I'm, I, 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 we shot a video of it, which might be coming out soon, mm, too, of cool. me actually reading it. But uh, okay. it's called A Poem for Snoopy. And Well, it's, the chapter is a poem for Snoopy. It's not really a chapter. It's just a couple pages. And the poem is called I Miss, and uh, I will read this to uh, everybody out there listening in uh, uh, podcast land, Internet radio land, uh, the universe. Mm. I miss. I miss your smile. The feel of your paw in my hand, your soft fur against my face, your sweet kisses, your fluffy wagging tail. I miss the excited sound you'd make when you knew you were going for a walk, the wolf-like howls you'd make when a fire engine siren was too near. I miss your warm presence illuminating my day, my nights, my life. I miss watching your nostrils dilate as you took in the smells when we'd walk past restaurants. I miss you lying near my feet, by the foot of my bed, and outside my office, protecting me from whatever. I miss your relenting, I'm sorry, I miss your unrelenting forgiveness, greeting me and loving me as no one else could. I miss watching you run on the grass in the park, sliding down the kitty slide and barking at those who you knew would do me harm. I miss our hikes in Griffith Park, massaging your neck and watching you gobble down your dry food at every meal. I miss watching you lick almond butter from a spoon in my hand, licking the remainder from the roof of your mouth and then finishing it off with a bowl of water. I miss the smell of your wet fur after a bath then watching you sit up, then jump up for a biscuit for being such a good boy. I miss watching you run up and down the stairs and ride in my car with the wind gently moving the fur on your back. I miss watching you grow and playing at the dog park in front of our house with your cat friend or wherever I took you. You were a happy boy, my boy, my love. I miss caring for you loving you, being your best friend, being there for when you fell ill, when you needed me most, and when you didn't need me at all. I miss loving you like I've never loved another, you touching my heart and mine, leaving a mark on my being, making me a better person. 
I miss your gentle calmness, your unconditional love. I miss our time together. I miss being missed by you. I miss everything about you. I miss you and will miss you forever and ever, my dear, dear Snoopy. That's it. Wow. Joey, thank you so much. Oh, (laughs) thank you. It's extraordinary. As are you, my dear. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. Okay, so for our audience, For our listener, go to mylifewithsnoopy.com, M-Y-L-I-F-E-W-I-T-H-S-N-O-O-P-Y.com. I think I did that right. (laughs) Uh, Mylifewithsnoopy.com. I've got tears in my eyes, so I can't read it very well. Um, And uh, check it out. Um, uh, Anything else? I think we're we're at a good, good, good place to end, and I need to go find some Kleenex. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, it uh, makes me makes me uh, tear up when I when I read parts of that uh, yeah. that 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 poem and uh, yeah. um, I, I hope people can relate to that I know uh, they uh, can. Uh, of their missed boy or girl. Right. <laughs> I know our people, our community, our tribe of animal lovers get it. So thank you. Um, you so everyone, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, so everyone, we've been speaking with Joey Kamen. Thanks so much for your time today, for sharing your heart with us, and for your love of animals. You do help make our world a better place. And thank you, Val. I appreciate it and uh, having me on, and I appreciate the work you do and the help you do for our, our, our furry friends. Thank you. Okay, let's go have a great day, and uh, I'll catch up with you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the show. For more information or to listen to other podcasts, go to valhart.com forward slash blog. And if you're someone who values a non-invasive, holistic solution to resolving problems with your dogs, cats, and horses, and you want better behaved, healthier, and happier animals, just go to my website at valhart.com to apply for a complimentary happy animal assessment session. And be sure and remember to look for my CDs on iTunes. Learning how to talk with animals is fun and will change your life. So while you're there at my site, get my free Quick Start Animal Talk course and check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system. May the love of animals bless you, teach you, inspire you, heal you, and reconnect you to the circle of life. Mm